KWC's PT92 has long been one of our best sellers, and for good reason. Offering a full metal build, hard kick, and full auto, it also hit that budget sweet spot at 180 Canadian dollars. But like most CO2 pistols, out of the box it shoots a little too hot for most fields at about 400 feet per second. Replacing the PT92 is the new M92, or specifically the KCB23. Just remember, PT92 is the old one and M92 is the new one. It's confusing, I know. Most importantly, they brought down that velocity down to indoor CQB levels, but they also revised the internals and they improved the overall build quality. Fortunately, the price remains the same at 180 Canadian loonies, or just 90 toonies. Less fortunate is the fact that the magazines and parts are not cross compatible with the old PT92 as it is an all new design. It's more of a spiritual replacement, I guess. Mind you, that's not a knock on the new M92. Having spent a week with the pistol, I can say with confidence that KWC has definitely upped their game. The new M92 is the most satisfying airsoft Beretta I've ever shot. And incidentally, it's also one of the cheapest as well. What's going on? Vincent here from the land that isn't the south. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's spray soft video. It was a lot of fun for us to shoot. And yes, we will be filming more at Siege in the future. Externally, the easiest way to distinguish the new M92 is this curved trigger guard like the real 92A1. At first, I was a little concerned that it would affect installing a pistol light, but the APL light fits perfectly. Fully constructed of metal, the M92 comes in at 1.3 kilograms versus 1.15 kilograms of the old PT92. For way of reference, the real 92A1 comes in at 945 grams unloaded, making the weight very realistic. The finish is a nice smooth matte black, which I think looks good, but the paint tends to scratch off a little bit too easily. The sights are now proper three dot sights as opposed to the odd white stripe and black front sight of the PT92. Construction quality is definitely an improvement with very little slide play and a rock solid barrel. It's a big improvement from the PT92 which almost feels as if it was made by a different company. I know I say it often but I only say it when it's true. This pistol really does feel solid in the hands. Give it the old shake test and there's not too much rattle versus the PT92 which sounds like shaking a spray paint can. Internally, you can see that the two Berettas are quite different. The new M92 has a much stiffer recoil spring and a better hop-up adjustment system that doesn't require a screwdriver. Interesting that the lower on the M92 has smaller slide rails but still manages to hold the slide much tighter. Worth mentioning is that the M92 is amazingly gas efficient. It can get through almost 5 magazines before swapping out a CO2. The PT92 can get through about two magazines, though admittedly at a higher velocity. As mentioned before, the magazines are different and are not cross compatible. The most welcome improvement is the addition of a little slot that allows you to load BBs into the middle of the magazine, though at this point, every magazine should have this. There's also an extra slot to hold your follower in place while you're loading your bibis. For the pursuit of realism, they did make minor changes to the externals like better slide serrations and the relocation of the safety switch up to the top of the slide where it should be. Putting the pistol on safe also does decock the pistol like on the real one. Now on the old PT92, full auto used to be all the way down on the selector switch which I've seen a lot of people accidentally engage. Perhaps realizing this, KWC made it a hidden switch on the right side of the pistol. In fact, it's so well hidden that a lot of us were convinced that they gave up full auto entirely. Personally, I'm not really one for full auto pistols, but just take a listen to this. Other than the WE M712, which doesn't even have a slide, this has to be one of the fastest full auto pistols ever made. It's a combination of 23 rounds per second and a very nice kick that makes this so much fun. Speaking of the kick, I'm not exaggerating when I say this one is very nice. 
They installed a stiff recoil spring and it diverted most of the CO2 gas into powering the blowback unit. That, combined with a very tight slide fitment, means every pull of the trigger sends a small jolt through your wrists. And trust me, it's really satisfying. You gotta come into the store and check one out for yourself. Let's take a look at that trigger. Double action is predictably long and quite heavy. Single action has about four millimeters of travel until the wall. Wall is a ramp up in stiffness and feels very typical Beretta. Brake is a little vague, but at least has no over travel. The reset is very nice with a positive click that you can feel through the trigger. Overall, the trigger is smooth and doesn't detract from the gun, but it's typical double action vagueness. Accuracy, like the trigger, is decent, but isn't this gun's selling point. It's not a race pistol. Out of the box, it was shooting a little to the right, and I found out it was because of some factory residue in the barrel. Of course, if you really need to hit your target, that's what 23 rounds per second is for. And there you have it, the KWC M92. The build quality of this one is just kilometers ahead of the outgoing PT-92. In fact, if you're just talking Berettas, the build quality is only second to the G&G GPM-92. That's right, even the TM, KJW, and the WE Berettas aren't quite as solid. And if we're talking about how it feels to shoot, this one just blows them out of the water. Now we all have our opinions on a company's reputation, and I'll admit, I generally don't think too much of KWC, but I always try to let a gun speak for itself. And this one has proven enough to make me seriously consider carrying it as my first ever CO2 pistol. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for more Canadian content, and we'll catch you next time.